Hey everybody, this is Mr. Storm, and in this video, we're going to actually create the Space Battles project. And we have a lot to do, so I'm just going to get into it. I've already created a new Space Battles project uh, in Unity, and I've imported my, my assets, so I have my scripts, which there are quite a few scripts here, um, and my sprites. Let's first focus on fixing our sprites so that they're, they fit our game. So I'm going to click the first sprite, the background. I'm going to hold shift and click the player ship sprite. And then I'm going to come over here and change this to 32 pixels per unit. I'm going to turn off the filter and hit apply. Okay, now we want to bring our background into the game. So I'm going to drop that in, set it to 0, 0 on the X and Y. And notice that my camera is a bit, I don't know, it's weird, right? I don't want, this is the play area of my game here, but I don't want big black blocks over here. I want to set my camera so that it is only the same size as my background. So here's how we can do that. If you go to the game tab, notice that you have this option up here. It's either called free aspect or something, one of these options, right? This is where we can change the, the, the resolution of our, or the aspect ratio of our camera. You can create your own aspect ratios down here. The one we're looking for is 510. So if you don't have it, which you probably won't, this is one that I've created, you wanna click the plus button. You can label it whatever you want, and you can change the width and height. We're looking for a width of five to a width of 10, because it's twice as tall it is, as it is wide. All right, I'm going to choose 510 and notice my camera now shrinks down to exactly the size of my background, which is exactly what I want, right? That's exactly what I'm looking for. Perfect. Okay, so now we need to actually get some animations going. Let's talk about our enemy ship here. So if we take a look at the enemy ship, notice that there are two distinct pieces of artwork. But if we were to drag this out, oh, let's set our background to negative 10 and the order and layer so everything shows up on top of it. All right, so if I grab my enemy ship here and I bring them on top, notice that there's two ships here on top of each other. We don't want both of those. We want these to be separated into um, you know, distinct frames so that we can animate them. So I'm gonna delete the enemy ship object I've just created. And I'm gonna select the enemy ship sprite. And over here in the inspector, I see that in sprite mode, I can change this from single to multiple. I'm going to do that and hit apply. Now I can go into the sprite editor, so I can click this button here, which will open up this panel. This is our sprite editor. And in the sprite editor, we can do all kinds of things. Uh, what we're concerned with is this option called slice. So I'm going to hit the slice drop down menu. I want to make sure it's set to automatic first. I want to try automatic. If automatic doesn't work, then we can set it up to a custom pixel value. But I think automatic should work. I'm going to click slice. And it looks like automatic worked pretty well. You'll notice that there are these white boxes around my artwork. That is basically saying, hey, this is the artwork that's going to be you know, cut out of this image. And these two boxes are going to be our independent frames that we can use for animation. So I'm going to click apply. And now I can see I have two separate pieces of artwork that I can manipulate. Oh, yep, apply. And now when I go down here, notice that I have two separate frames that I can then drag out and do something with. Okay, so I want to actually animate these frames. So I'm going to click on the first one, hold shift, click on the next one, and drag them both out into my scene. And when I do, this window pops up. And this is really just asking me to create a new animation or, or tell Unity where I should save the new animation. Notice that it's trying to go into, go into assets and sprites. It's trying to go into my sprites folder. I actually want to create a new folder inside of my sprites folder called animations. And I want to put my animation in there. And I want to rename my animation. I want to call it enemy. And I will click save. Notice now I have an animations folder. So I'm going to double click on that. And I have an animator controller and an animation in here. So I'm going to open up the animator controller. Let's take a look. So we only have one animation state, which is enemy. And I want that to play continuously as soon as the game starts. 
So, uh, but I don't want this to be, I don't want it to be that fast. Let's try 0 0.5 and see what that looks like. Okay, let's go into the game and see what our animation looks like. Okay, you can see it's very subtle, but you can see that there's a very subtle change, right? It looks like there's some fire coming out of the exhaust port on the back of our enemy ship, and that's what we're looking for, right? And the animation's going to play over and over again uh, while this object exists in the game. That's what we're looking for. That looks great. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So now that we have our enemy ship object here, let's actually rename this just to enemy ship. Oh. There we go. Now that we have our enemy ship object here, let's start, you know, adding in some properties that it's going to need. First, we want a, uh, let's put a collider on it, a 2D box collider. All right. And wait. Oh, we're in game view. That's why I was like, why can I not see the collider? All right. So we're going to put a 2D box collider on it. And let's add a rigid body 2D. Okay, now you might be thinking, hey, uh, this is probably when we're gonna wanna keep the gravity scale because we want it to fall, right? Because we want the enemies to spawn at the top and then come down. But we're actually gonna handle that through the script, so we're still gonna turn off gravity. We are going to freeze the rotation. Okay, all of this looks good so far. Um, let's add a script. Let's go to our scripts. Now we have a bunch of scripts, we have border, Bullet damage, continuous movement, fire enemy, fire player, move, and spawn. The script we're looking for for this is continuous movement. Continuous movement is going to basically allow any object in our game to just move in one direction at a continual pace, at a continuous pace. So notice when I drag in the continuous movement script, we have velocity on the X and velocity on the Y. We want velocity on the Y to be negative one, so we can see it moving down Okay, there we go. So now it's moving down on the negative one. Beautiful. All right. Now we also want our, our ship to be shooting something. We want it to be shooting some bullets. So let's bring out our bullets. So I'm going to bring out the enemy bullet. Bring that out. That's a bit big, but that's okay. Um, and I want to add a rigid body 2D to the bullet. And I want to add a, let's try a circle collider. All right. So with the circle collider, well, let's fix the rigid body first. Gravity scale, zero. Uh, rotation is frozen. And with the circle collider, let's edit the collider so it's not the whole thing. And let's shrink it down. Okay. Now we need to move it over. So we need to change this X offset. We need to move that over. And let's actually move down on the Y. So it's like the bulk of the bullet is the collider. All right, perfect. Now we also need a continual continuous movement script for this. So let's drop in continuous movement. Oh, come on. There we go, continuous movement. And we want this to go faster than the enemy ships, obviously. All right, let's see what that looks like. Maybe a little faster than that. Let's try negative four. Let's double that speed. We want it to feel like it's a blaster bolt coming out fast. Okay, that's a bit better. We can fix that later if we really, really want to. Okay, so now that bolt is working. Oh, we also need this bullet damage script because it needs to destroy objects whenever they come into contact. So let's add the bullet damage script as well. Okay. And then I believe that's enough. I believe that's it. So I'm going to create a prefabs folder. Okay. And I'm going to add the enemy bolt into the prefab folder. Okay. And let's go ahead and delete it from our scene. Now back to our enemy ship. We need to create a spawner that will continuously spawn bullets out of the front of my enemy ship. So on the enemy ship, I'm going to right click and create an empty object. Now notice that it's going to be kind of indented under the enemy ship and I now have this arrow, I can click it. That is creating a child of the enemy ship. So this new game object is gonna be a child of the enemy ship. And I actually wanna be able to see it. 
So I'm going to come over here to the inspector and click this cube and add just like a, let's add a red uh, like diamond here. This is just so that we can see where it exists in the game. Um, and I want to move it down to about the front of the enemy ship because this is where our bullets are going to spawn from. Okay. And I'm going to rename this to bullet spawner. Okay. Now, if we look at our scripts, we actually have a fire enemy script. Ooh. So we're going to attach the fire enemy script there. And we want to attach our bullet prefab to the script. And it's going to spawn at an interval of two. So let's go ahead and play and see if that works. And it does. So our, our enemy ship is shooting bullets at our player that doesn't exist yet. Okay, so the last thing we need to do to get our enemies working properly is we need to create a spawner that will spawn the enemies at the top of the screen. Um, but first, I want to actually use create a, a, a prefab out of my enemy ship. So I'm going to drag enemy ship down in here. So now we have a prefab. So here's an interesting thing that we've just done. We've created a prefab of the enemy ship. The enemy ship has a spawner which calls a prefab of the bullet. So anyway, so now we have a prefab of the enemy ship. Let's go ahead and delete that. So now we want to create some empty objects. Let's create an object. Let's rename it. Let's call it um, spawner. We can call it spawner, enemy spawner, whatever we want. And in there, we're going to attach the script spawn. Now spawn is going to, it's going to spawn a specific object. Uh, and that is going to be the enemy ship. And it can spawn in an interval of one, but we can change this. All right. And I want to add, let's add a tag to this. Let's make it purple so we can see where it is. I'm going to put it at zero on the X and I'm going to move it up to right about there. And then I can actually duplicate these spawners. Let's have, let's add three of them into my game. Oh, not on the Y. Hello. Yeah, let's, let's just set them to seven. Why not? Okay. And seven. Okay, so now I want to move this one to... Let's do right about there. Let's do negative two. And let's add this one to positive two. Okay. So now when we play the game, that should spawn enemy or enemy spaceships throughout my game. Now notice it's spawning a ton of them right on top of each other. And when they're shooting, the bullets are kind of getting stuck. So we want to change the intervals on these. Um, let's make it five. Now you can change the interval on these so that they, you know, they spawn at different rates, which adds some variability into the program, which is probably what you're looking for. Okay. All right. So now our, our ship spawn and so do the bullets. Okay, perfect. And we can tweak those settings as we go. Ooh, one last thing I forgot to do on the enemy ship. So let's open up the prefab. So up here in tag, uh, we, want to we want to tag this as a ship. The way our bullets uh, script works is if it hits an object, um, and that object is tagged with ship, it's going to destroy that object. Now notice that the, the, the enemy bullet was hitting the, the um, enemy behind it, right? Or the, hitting the enemy uh, in front of it. Um, we want it to actually blow up its, the ship if it shoots its own enemies. Uh, but we also, more importantly, want it to blow up our ship whenever our ship is in the game. So we need to click on the tag and click add tag. It's going to pull up this menu. Uh, we don't have any custom tags, so let's click the plus and let's create a new tag called ship. Now, the weird thing is it doesn't actually set our enemy ship tag to ship when we did that. It just created a new tag. So select your enemy ship again and then 
add ship to the tag. So now it's a it's tagged as a ship. Okay, let's go back. All right, so now if we do that, the, the enemy ship should blow up whenever they get hit by a bullet, whether it's their bullet or an enemy bullet or uh, our bullet. All right, bring in another group, shoot them. Now they all go away. Okay, that's what we want. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so now that's pretty much working. Now we just need to bring our guy in. Um, let's go to sprites. Now our player ship is going to be a bit different um, because we have we have an animation that's dependent upon a state. Now this is something we're gonna get into heavily next week, but for now, let me very quickly explain what we're talking about here. So with the move script over here, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see down here, we have get component animator set bool flying. So what we wanna do is we want to create an animator controller and we want to set a boolean parameter called flying so that it determines whether or not we're flying okay and if we're flying we're going to do one animation if we're not we're going to do another that's essentially what we're going to be doing so let's go ahead and separate this out let's do multiple apply sprite editor and let's choose automatic let's slice it up and let's hit apply Okay, now these first two frames are gonna be our idle animation. So I'm gonna select those first two frames and bring them out into the game space. And inside the animations folder, let's call this idle. All right. Now these next two frames are gonna be our flying animation. So I'm gonna bring those out into the game space, put them in animations, call this flying. All right, now we don't need two copies of our player ship, so let's get rid of player ship two. I'm gonna delete that. And if we go into animations, we actually don't need two player controllers. So let's get rid of player ship two animator controller. All right, and now we can, we can open up the animator controller on player ship. So we have one animation called idle, but we need to bring in the other animation called flying, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a transition from idle to flying, but we need a parameter to base that on. So I'm gonna go to parameters, hit plus, and create a bool. I'm gonna call that flying, exactly like that, capital F, flying, because we need to make sure that our script finds this parameter and can change it based on script input. Okay, now in order to get from idle to flying, we wanna right click and click create transition. Oh make transition and that's gonna oh that that's weird it's like oh there we go that was weird it was glitching out so it creates this kind of weird arrow thingy we're going to find the state we want to connect to and then click now notice this arrow in the middle this arrow is the transition and we can set up the transition to bait to to happen whenever we want it to happen so down here in conditions, ooh, first, let's uncheck has exit time because we don't need, we don't want has, has exit time. We want it to move back and forth quickly. So let's go to list is empty down here under conditions and let's set the condition for flying. So if flying is true, then we're going to move to the flying state. Then over here, we wanna create another transition back to idle and we wanna set the condition to be is if flying is false, then we'll go back to idle and we'll uncheck has exit time. Okay, perfect. Now, if we open up our game, uh, let's move our animator over here so we can kind of see what we're doing. Now focus on the, the, the game or the, the ship down here. When I hit play, notice that it goes into its idle animation, which is just a little bit of thruster change. But if I check flying, notice that it it makes it look a lot, you know, more like it's thrusting, right? So it's boosting. And if I uncheck flying, it goes back to the animation state. That's, or to the idle state. That's what we're looking for. All right, let's bring the animator back over here. Okay, so now we just have to finish um, building our player ship object. Let's go ahead and delete. 
that, make it a player ship. Okay, we need, um, let's do a rigid body, 2D. Turn off the gravity, freeze the rotation. We need a circle collider, 2D. Let's edit the collider so it's smaller. And let's bring it over and bring it down right about there. That looks good to me. Okay. And let's see, what scripts do we need? Well, we're going to want uh, move. So we need a move script. Okay. That looks good to me. So let's make sure we can move. And our animations are working. Notice whenever I thrust forward, I get the new animation. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, perfect. Now I want to, let's tag my ship, my player ship as a ship, so that whenever I get hit, I actually die. Um, let's create a, bo a, a bullet spawner. Uh, but first we need to create the bullet. So let's go to sprites. Bring out the blaster bolt. Um, let's add a component, Circle Collider 2D. Edit that down. Bring that over. And that's about good. That looks fine. Okay, let's add a rigid body 2D. Okay. And gravity zero, constraints. Let's add a continuous movement script onto this. Oh, come on. Now I want it to go up by, I think four on the Y. So it's gonna be a positive four on the Y. And then let's create a prefab out of this. So Let's, oh no, I need to add the bullet damage script here as well. Okay, now let's create a prefab out of this. Let's go prefabs, drag her back down in here. All right, now I can delete that. And on my player ship, I want to create a spawner. So create an empty, rename, call this bullet spawner. And let's set this to a green diamond and let's move it up a little bit on the Y. And then in this bullet spawner, we are going to create a fire player. Now the reason why the fire player script and the fire enemy script are different is because the enemy shoots at a specific interval, whereas us, we fire based on um, hitting the space bar. All right, so I'm gonna bring in my blaster bolt there. Um, I think the only thing we have left to do is if we, if you play this game, you'll notice that in your, up there, in the hierarchy, you'll notice that bullets and enemies will just keep stacking up on top of each other and they never go away. What we wanna do is let's create a series of um, borders that we can attach. Let's add colliders, box collider 2D. And let's move these to the edges of the game. And basically all we wanna do is, is catch any objects that, oop, catch any objects that go outside of the border or hit the border. Uh, and then we're gonna use this script here, the border script, to basically remove that object from the game. So again, it's very, very quick. We don't have to spend too much time making this perfect. We just want to catch some objects. So we'll grab the border. All right. Add a box collider 2D, edit. And, and believe it or not, we're actually done with the game. I know this video has been quite, kind of long, but this is a pretty complicated project. Oh, I forgot to add the border script. 
Um, and some of these projects, really the projects that we work on in the next term are gonna be more complicated than, than the ones we've built last term. Uh, but hopefully they'll be more fun to build and you'll, you'll learn a lot more. This would go faster if I wasn't misclicking on everything. Okay, so now when we play the game, I should be able to shoot bullets out of my... Oh yeah, look at that. Now notice that when I shoot, I can actually run into... Oh, I've, I'm killing all the enemies too quickly. Alright, let's see if I delete. Yep, game's over because I got hit. Okay, so the game basically works at this point. Um, you can make any modifications you want to it, um, but uh, if you get it to this point, then your game is actually working. Make it fun, make it interesting, and um, thanks for sticking through this long project. All right, I'll see you next time.